go through my list here. We already know that you have diabetes, so we don't have to talk about detecting it. Um, but we probably should talk a little bit then about just the plain old number one, how do you control your blood sugar? Um, are you both just taking oral medication? Yeah, I hope that's all I ever have to put on one shot. So, um, <laughs> let me jump ahead then to insulin. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things that we have learned... Are you on it? No. No. Yeah. <coughs> but one of the things we've learned is that insulin is an excellent treatment for type 2 diabetes. I mean, it sounds kind of silly to say that because you're... Sh You've got insulin resistance. Of course, we know you need more insulin. But um, a lot of people are mentally resistant to the idea of mm -hmm. taking insulin. Um, get that impression, you know, I'll, I'll only use insulin if something, if I failed somehow, if I didn't do things right. And one of the things we'd like to try to start turning around is that idea that insulin means you've, you've failed to control your diabetes in other ways. In fact, we've started to think that when people are first diagnosed with diabetes, even type 2 diabetes, that, um, that we need to start talking about insulin right away. Um, and there's, there's a couple of good reasons for it. One is to make it seem less like it's a failure on your part. <laughs> um, two, sometimes if we start using insulin, um, people have a better opportunity to control their weight. The oral hypoglycemics are a little sketchy. I mean, we, we don't get great reliable results with them. If you eat too much and your blood sugar goes up, you can take another metformin or another glipizide or gliburide, and that probably will control it, but it's not in a, it's not the way that the, norm, the human body would control it. With insulin, we can work much more closely with what your body would do. So when your blood sugar goes up, we give you more insulin, just like your body I'd, would I'd like to do. I'd probably eat more stuff if I took insulin. I think I can, because I've seen some people that's on insulin. There are some people who do that, and that is uh, another mental block. You know, they're like, oh, I'm going to eat a piece of cake, so I need to take more insulin. <laughs> so, um, so there's a balance have to figure out what your brain would do, um, but also we just, we try to encourage people to, to eat better. So let's go on a little bit with medications. Um, metformin is an interesting medication. Um, it was, it's relatively old now, I think it's been around about 15 years, maybe a little bit longer than that really, but using it quite a bit for about that long. Um, it's one of those medicines that um, helps the pancreas to produce more insulin itself. And it's a medicine that we use now, even before people have diabetes. If they start having insulin resistance or they we, we're worried that they're heading in that direction, um, we, give them in, we give them metformin before they've even had diabetes, before they've had too high blood sugars to get them into the diabetes range. Um, and it slows the progression to diabetes. It can also help people lose weight, which is a pretty nice side effect. Um, <laughs> unlike the medicines like glipizide and gliburide that tend to at least stall out weight loss, if not have you gain weight, um, metformin, well, it's the truth. <laughs> uh, but metformin tends to, to help you maybe lose some weight. I was on both side, and then and metform. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was taking the clip side, I'd have some of these shaky things. Hypoglycemic yeah, episodes, and uh -huh. you had to eat. Uh huh. Yeah. And so, uh, well, but when I went to that diabetic camp down, that's down right. There, you told me about that. Yeah. And uh, I mean, they we were well on a vegan diet all over there. Yeah. And I said, I gotta have some meat corn. I just got to have it. But you know, I don't eat I don't eat hardly any meat, meat anymore. anymore. Just yeah. I eat I eat some but but not a whole lot. Right. And I used to have chicken I had to have chicken fried steak. I mean that was you know How do you live without sugar? Well, I get enough. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> because but, that's of course, you know, yeah. more than Cutting meat out of your diet, uh -huh. cutting sugar out, or processed carbohydrates is uh -huh. um, one of the more important things to try to keep your blood sugar. But 
So metformin does not usually cause hypoglycemia. It rarely causes your blood sugar to get way too low. It can, but it's not very often. Whereas the glipizide they do cause hypoglycemia. They'll, they will knock your blood sugar way down. And then you get hungry and you feel like you need to eat um, or your body has to try to make up some extra sugar to, to make up for it. So that can be a tough balance because yeah. they're great medicines. Um, they're great. They're cheap. They're uh, yeah, it's cheap. Yeah, it's cheap medicine. It's a nice medicine, except for that knocking you down a little too low sometimes. Um, there are a bunch of new medicines out there to control diabetes. Um, I'm just I'm a scaredy cat. When I went to my first uh, pharmacy lecture in medical school, the pharmacist stood up and the first thing he said was. Never the first nor last to be a, to prescribe a medication B, <laughs> um, and I've always tried to work with that. You know, I, I don't want to be the first person to say, "Oh yeah, look at this new medicine here, try it." Um, but I don't want to be the last one on the bandwagon when there's a great medicine out there either. So um, I love medicines that have been around about 15 years, <laughs> 20 years. You know, the glipizides and glyburides, 40 years, I think. You know. <laughs> I like those medicines, even if they have side effects. We know what they are, mm -hmm. and we know how to watch them. They're cheap medicines. They're nice. Um, it really is nice to have that spread. But um, the very old, old medicines often have side effects and problems that are the reason that we develop the new medicines. But the new medicines can have side effects that we just haven't found out about yet. <laughs> and so, um, and quite a few medicines recently for diabetes have been put on the market, um, given to a lot of people, and then we say, oh, that causes a pretty significant problem, maybe we should, and they've been withdrawn from the market. Um, so it's, it's touchy about what to do with those medicines and when the time comes, when it's safe enough for us to prescribe them. Some medicines are new to the U.S. market, but they've been marketed in Europe for a long time, so the safety profile is actually pretty vast. Um, and so some of those medicines we can go ahead and jump on board as soon as they come on the U.S. market because we have such safety evidence from before, but it's always a balance. So glipside, glyburide, metformin, insulin, and many different formulations of insulin um, are known to be safe, but some of the newer insulins even, we don't have a great safety profile on, and so it's a balance of what you feel comfortable using. We're not going to talk about specifics today, but I think it's important to know that there are medicines, a lot of medicines out there, and if you have trouble with your blood sugars, um, it's good to...